prepare our hearts to commemorate the Feast of the Assumption of the Body of the Holy Mother of God, let us take some time to think about the Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, the Mother of us all, the pride of our race, the pure, filled with grace, ever Virgin Queen. What can we learn from her love for God and her submission to His will? How did her choices and the way that she lived her earthly life affect ours? How does she continue to impact the world through her intercession? The Church elevates her over the rank of the Archangels and honor her with great love. It is difficult to give an account of the prominent place of St. Mary in the Coptic Church. Every daily hymn, liturgy, and canonical hour of Ecbea invokes the Holy Virgin. She is commemorated in monthly and yearly feasts. We have gathered quotes from the Church Fathers about the Theotokos. Many of those Fathers lived in an age closer to her earthly life than the current era. Their teaching laid the foundation for the understanding of Mary's role in Christian theology. We plan to share sayings and patristic writings related to the place and faith of St. Mary in the Orthodox Church. As we present each quote, may we all be inspired to be as genuine, humble, and obedient as she has been. Saint Alexander of Alexandria, in an address reproduced by his successor, Saint Athanasius, instructs the virgins, you have as an example the conduct of Mary, who is the type and image of the life that is proper to heaven. Saint Athanasius, in his letter to virgins, which is still preserved in Coptic, presents St. Mary as the model of virgins, describing her life not as it appears in the Holy Scriptures, but as the model of virgins' life. St. Ambrose, referring to St. Athanasius' letter to virgins, paints a beautiful picture of the Virgin Mary as the model of all virgins. He prays St. Mary for her humility, her silence, and moderation in speech, her seclusion, her solicitude to keep an unsullied reputation, her modesty, her assiduity in reading the scripture, her respect for others, her diligence, and especially for her faith and devotion. So he rightly wrote, have them before your eyes as an image, the virgin life of Mary, from whom as from a mirror shines forth the brightness of chastity and the form of virtue. These writings testify to many Christians women in the fourth and fifth centuries who lived an ascetic life at home. Examples include St. Macrina, the sister of St. Basil of Caesarea, St. Melania the Younger in Jerusalem. On the honor of the Virgin, St. Gregory wrote, and that was that the Word of God Himself, who is before all the worlds, the invisible, the incomprehensible, the bodiless, the beginning of beginning, the light of light, the source of life and immortality, the image of the archetype, the immovable seal, the unchangeable image, the Father's definition and word, came to his own image and took on him flesh for the sake of our flesh and united himself with an intellectual soul for my soul's sake, purifying like by like, and in all points except sin became man conceived by the Virgin, who first in body and soul was purified by the Holy Spirit. For it was needful that both childbearing should be honored and that virginity should receive a higher honor. He came forth then as God, with that which he had assumed one person from two natures. Virginity is a necessary door to a holier life. It is a channel which draws down the deity to share men's state. It creates wings for men's desire to rise to heavenly things, as it is a bond of union between the divine and the human. By its mediation, it brings into harmony these existences so widely divided. It has been proven as well that this union of the soul with the incorruptible deity can be accomplished in no other way than by attaining the greatest possible purity, a state which being like God will enable one to grasp that state of virginity, which reflects the purity of God like a mirror in which one's own image become molded with beauty at the touch and sight of the archetype of all beauty. 
Those quotes demonstrate the early church fathers' reverence for the Virgin Mary and their recognition of her unique role in the incarnation of Jesus Christ as the Theotokos, the Mother of God. St. Mary opened to us the unspeakable abbeys of God's love for us. Through her, the old enmity against the Creator is destroyed. Through her, our reconciliation with Him is strengthened. Peace and grace are given to us. And we who were in this honor are made the children of God. From her, we have plucked the fruit of life. From her, we have received the seed of immortality. She is the channel of all our goods. In her, God was man and man was God. What more is marvelous and more blessed? My fellow Christians, St. Mary holds a profound and highly revered and exalted position in our hearts. Let us honor her. Let us delight in her purity of soul and body. For she, next to God, surpasses all in purity. Let us therefore show our love for her by being compassionate, kind, merciful, loving, obedient, and humble as she has been.